So, Wizards just dropped three new subclasses into D&D. They are from the Giant Options Unearthed Arcana. And woo are these big! So let's break them down and find out how good are the new D&D subclasses actually. Path of the Giant's Barbarian. So this bad boy is like the Rune Knight fighter on crack. Starting out at level 3, you get a free bonus language and a free cantrip, either druidcraft or thaumaturgy. Barbarians and spellcasting don't usually mix, but because these are out-of-combat roleplay spells, they'll actually be castable. That gives barbarians some tools for interacting with people other than ripping their heads off. You also get Giant's Havoc, which says when raging, you can add your rage damage to ranged attack rolls that use strength. You also become large, and your reach increases by 5 feet. This is solid. You get a bonus to your javelin throws, and being large means you can grapple bigger enemies. At 6th level, you get Elemental Cleaver, letting you add 1d6 acid, fire, lightning, cold, or thunder damage to every attack you make while raging. Plus, whatever weapon you're wielding gets the throw property, and it reappears in your hand the moment it hits or misses. So basically, the makers of D&D have been playing God of War. Seriously, this is amazing. That's 3d6 plus rage plus strength per attack, and it can be ranged. And just throwing around a flaming greatsword sounds awesome. At 10th level, you get Mighty Impel. As a bonus action while raging, it lets you throw a medium or smaller creature up to 30 feet to an unoccupied space you can see. You can throw an ally to get them into or out of the action, or you can throw an enemy if they fail a strength save. So the obvious trick here is to just bonus action launch your enemies 30 feet into the air. They fall 30 feet down, take 3d6 damage and land prone. So every melee attack from you or the rest of your team comes in at advantage until they get up. Finally, at level 14, while raging, your size grows to huge, you can launch creatures that are large or smaller, and your elemental cleaver extra damage increases to 2d6 per attack. That gives you 4d6 per attack as your base damage with a greatsword. Incredible. This looks like an amazing choice for beginners. It's really strong, there's no tricky choices you need to worry about, and you even get some great roleplay spells to explore out of combat. All in, this is an S-tier subclass. One of the strongest barbarians, right up there with Path of the Totem. Nobody move! I'm the Hacker Man! I'm here to- Stop! We've done this so many times before, man. Like, you're gonna try and snoop on my internet browsing, I'm gonna remember I have NordVPN, and then you're- you're gonna be defeated. No, 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 you've made a mistake. I'm not a computer hacker. They call me Hacker Man because I'm gonna hack your arms and legs off with this knife. God, that's dark. Yeah, no, no, I, I'm like literally a serial killer. Oh. But wait! Using NordVPN, I can change my location to anywhere in the world and escape! I'm in Ohio, bitch! That only changes your IP location. You don't actually move. Ah, oh, I thought I was gonna, like, literally teleport. Wait, wait, wait! Ohio, America! So we could be watching Big Bang Theory on Netflix right now! Oh, God, no! Can't you just kill me? Nah, screw that! This is way better! Let's have a Bazinga binge, baby! NordVPN is the fastest VPN on the market, available on tons of devices, keeping you and your internet browsing secure. Visit nordvpn.com slash dndshorts or click the link below to get an insane discount deal and browse with peace of mind online today. That's nordvpn.com slash dndshorts, link in description. Circle of the Primeval Druid so primeval druids are a bit like a cross between Beastmaster Rangers and Wildfire Druids. At second level you get proficiency in history and you can add a d4 to any history check. Because old, I guess. More excitingly, you can also summon a primeval creature by expending one use of your wild shape. The cool part is, this creature can be of any form you like. It has a similar stat block to the Wildfire Druid's Wildfire Spirits, with a couple of differences. It can't fly, has better AC, has a melee attack, it can intercept an incoming attack to tank a bit of damage for you, and most importantly, it lasts forever until it hits zero hit points. That is low-key amazing, seeing as you get your wild shapes back every short rest. You can summon this, kick back and chill for an hour, and then boom, it's like it was free. From 6th level, you can cast any spell with a range other than self through your companion, 
and your companion gets some bonuses to resist spell effects that you cast. This is actually pretty crazy, because there's no range limit on this ability. A level 3 warlock, level 6 druid, could have an imp familiar riding a woolly mammoth primal companion. You could then communicate with the imp from anywhere on the material plane, look through its eyes, and then cast spells through your companion. Congratulations! You can now blow up enemies and loot dungeons across the world from the safety of your own couch. At 10th level, you get Titanic Bond. Your companion is now large, and you can give it a climb speed or a swim speed. Also, once per turn, when you hit a creature with an attack or deal damage with a spell, you get a chance to frighten that creature. Because druids be scary now. Finally, at 14th level, your companion gets another buff. You can expend one spell slot of any level to boost its power for one hour relative to the level of the spell slot you used. Your companion becomes huge, they get 10 times the spell level in temporary hit points, their walking speed increases by 5 times the spell level, and every attack deals an extra 1d8 plus the spell level damage. This gives you either a terrifying monster in combat, or an awesome all-terrain vehicle for the party. All in, primeval druids get a solid A. Great subclass. Runecrafter wizard. Runecrafter wizards are wizards that use and read runes. Who'd have thought? From when you take the subclass at second level, you can read and understand any language. You always have the Comprehend Languages spell prepared, and you can cast it for free. Also, you can use runes to power up your spells with the Runic Empowerment ability. Anytime you cast a leveled spell, you can invoke one of three runes. Life Rune. Give a creature within 30 feet of you temporary hit points equal to five times the level of the spell you cast. Wind Rune. Your speed increases by five feet times times the level of the spell you cast, and your movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks this turn. War Rune. A creature within 30 feet of you gets a bonus to all attack rolls equal to half the level of the spell you cast, rounded up, for the next turn. So a first level spell would get them a plus one, a third level spell would get them a plus two, etc. You can empower a spell like this a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus per long rest. So not a lot, actually. At sixth level, you get some bonus protection. When you fail a strength, dex, or con save, you can expend one use of your runic empowerment to just succeed that save instead. That is really good, and will definitely come in clutch for maintaining concentration on important spells. At 10th level, you get the Rune Maven ability. Basically, whenever you use your arcane recovery feature on a short rest, you also regain some expended uses of runic empowerment. You regain no more than half your intelligence modifier rounded up, so basically three. Finally, at level 14, you can use your runes to curse enemies. As a bonus action, a creature of your choice within 60 feet of you must succeed a wisdom save or be cursed by a rune of your choice for the next minute or until you drop concentration as if you were concentrating on a spell. There's Runecraft's Bane. The creature has disadvantage on saving throws against all spells you cast. There's Unveiled Enemy. The creature becomes visible if it's invisible, and it can't benefit from being invisible. Then there's Woeful Curse. This one is weirdly worded, but basically it means you can use a bonus action to deal an extra 1d8 force damage the next time that creature is dealt damage this round. Okay, so the first one of these is amazing. Disadvantage on every spell for a minute is basically a death sentence. The other two are really average by comparison. The invisibility one is basically just the first level spell Fairy Fire, but worse, and the damage one only deals 1d8 force damage as your bonus action. It's just not relevant enough at this point in the game. All in, runecraft wizards are a bit like sorcerers, using runes instead of sorcery points to power up their key spells. Almost all the runes can benefit your allies, and you have amazing resilience against saving throws and work as a universal translator. Plus, the life rune makes you the closest thing to a healing wizard we've ever seen. I'd like to see them get some exclusive spells, like the Gravity and Chronogy Wizards got, to help push them over the edge. Plus, you just don't get many runes, and you're going to be burning through them fast, especially if you want to use them to succeed on key saving throws. As they stand, I'd give them a C+. They're not terrible, but I'd love them to have a little bit more. But there are also seven new feats in this expansion that look amazing, like the Soul of the Storm Giant. 
I've made a video where I break them all down and come up with some awesome combo ideas, which is, or very soon will be, up on the Patreon, available to all tiers. However, if you can't afford the three pounds a month to support the channel, but you really want to see that Feats video, don't worry. Just drop me a message on Discord and I'll link the video to you for free if you can't afford to support right now. But if you can spare the price of a coffee a month to support the channel and get access to a bunch more bonus content, link to the Patreon is up here and down there. There's also a link to the giant options PDF in the description below if you want to read through it yourself. Remember to like and subscribe, check out other videos on the channel, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.